Well, hello, this is Ira from Quilts and Lace. We wanted to try something a little bit different, so we'll do a little sew along in here. So the, our machine club, the project for this month was to make a little clock face, time to sew. And this one in here, I had just glued the, uh, the, those little clock handles. I brought the one from home that is an actual clock. So I literally had in here a clock mechanism. It's a little bit different than this one in here. Uh, the idea came from Brother Block site where they use these letters, but I created this a little bit different. So um, people who signed up on a club will also get the instructions emailed for them. But I will kind of demonstrate in here how, it were, how I created this design. But first, some of the supplies that we would need. Obvious the background fabric. I use some heavier upholstery fabric, but then we still need some stabilizers. So I brought these big rolls in here. In my list, I put in there a tearaway stabilizer. You could also use a cutaway, uh, or here's a tearaway, tear um, different versions of cutaway. Uh, other one that is really kind of cool, I have become really liking this one too, uh, ultra soft fusible. It's a special baby lock stabilizer that is like a really, really uh, soft fleece kind of one, but not really thick. So that would be a great one for this project too. And you know, we have this one at the shop. And if your fabric has a little bit of a texture like this upholstery fabric, I also used a topping. So whether it is the heat, heat and corn, which is a heat away topping or water soluble topping to kind of keep those stitches on the surface. And then other than, of course, we need the machine that has the capability for the, uh, creating the designs. And we need the largest hook, whether it is the, uh, the 9 and a uh, half by 14 or the uh, 10 and 5 eighths by 16 hook. Uh, I don't have the embroidery unit connected on mine in here, but uh, obviously you would have to have the embroidery unit connected and a foot. And then, of course, embroidery threads, whichever colors you want to use. And, and then uh, eventually we will also need something to mount this one. I just used a canvas and there's a, a, even an example of one of those clock mechanisms and in here also. So those are some of the things that are needed. The very last thing I have on a supply list is the handy tool that comes with all the brother and baby lock machines. It's an awl or a little hole puncher that is needed to punch the hole for the clock mechanism. So those are the supplies that we would be needed and it will be on the supply list also. So getting started, this project and initially idea came from Brother Block from August. So if you go on the Brother's uh, social, uh, social, social Block in there, you'll find this one. So the first thing I often call on my screen in here, and I'm using the Solaris in here, you can use a, uh, uh, multiple machines, machines that have either the IQ designer or my design center. So first I'm going to check in, change in here a little bit on the settings, on the embroidery settings in here. Uh, this time I don't really want to have any grids on my display. So I'm taking the grid out, just a blank, and also I'm having my kind of biggest hoop to show up in here, so that way I don't have any extra sewing in a display. And I'm start, going to start with embroidery side of the machine, so that way there's no grid lines or anything showing up my work, workspace. So I'll be creating the clock face first. And what I'm using in here are the uh, decorative stitches in the machine. It looks like buttonholes, but we have another tab, number three in here, that has multiple decorative stitches. And there are just, uh, just lots of them, a lot, a lot of stitches. The one that I want to use is stitch number 139. So just keep scrolling in here until we get to 139. Here we go, uh, getting close. There we have it. That kind of looks a bit like a, uh, would be a, a good uh, clock face here. So we will select that one and hit set. It's just a little clock uh, handle in here. We would need four of those ones because I wanted to have uh, the, the noon uh, and uh, the three o'clock, three o'clock, uh, three, three, nine, six o'clock, those fancy ones. So it is selected as a default. We'll go to edit and then we'll make a copy. The copy is in here where we have a couple little uh, squares. So I will touch that one. And now we have another copy here. So what we will, what I want to do on this one is I'm going to rotate it. 
So we're gonna rotate 90 degrees and uh, 120. And if I touch the center button here, it'll mount on top of it. So I can uh, then also scroll it down. On other option, how I can line these ones. Even if I move it in here, if I kind of sort of get them sort of, sort of lined up at the moment. But we have some cool tools in the machine. Um, if I go in here on the multiple selection key, and I select both of those items, so they get a little pink in the background, and then I will uh, on my edit window, I have some alignment tools in here. So I can align them center justified or uh, left or right justified. So I want to use the center justified in here. So now they are perfectly aligned. Another thing I'd also like to make sure that they are centered. So I'm, I'm gonna touch this move button again, that I get these move arrows, center key, puts them right in the center. So I don't have to guess that one. Now I would need to have more of these, uh, uh, this, uh, two, two more uh, uh, signs. Well, in order to help a little bit assign these ones, align them, I'm gonna use another design as a helper. So I'm gonna go ahead and touch the add button in the bottom and go onto the frames. There's uh, all kinds of uh, frames in here. The first one is a circle and I will select the just the straight stitch style. I'm not gonna stitch this out, it's just a little helper. So I will set that one. It's right in the middle, but it's too big. So edit, size, and then I'm gonna hold down in here on the making it smaller, and I'm gonna hold it down until it kind of goes beep beep. And the smallest I can make it is 1.58 inches. So that kind of gives me a little bit of an idea in here if I zoom in uh, that uh, where I want those uh, things aligned. And I just noticed that mine in here, my eyeball didn't get exactly, so I'm gonna use this arrow kits to notch it down so that I'll have them just about uh, lining up with this uh, uh, circle that I have. That just helps me getting them kind of a same distance around. Close that window, then I'm gonna select both of these little um, um, handles, so I'm gonna go to the multiple selection key. Instead of selecting everything, because I don't really want the center, I just want this, this handle. So I click the handle and click the other one. And I got both selected. That's okay to close the window. And I'm gonna make a copy of it. So here's my copy. But then I would need to rotate, but oops, my rotation key is, uh, clear, uh, is grayed out. So what I had to do is group these together. See, when I group it, rotation key is available. So now I can rotate them 90 degrees, and if I send them, boom, they're perfectly aligned. So I don't have to guess at any. We have all these tools in the machine. Now I just need to have it till one o'clock, two o'clock, four o'clock, and five o'clock. So I need to add some more handles in here. So I wanted to use other stitches. So I'm gonna touch add, Go back in here with the sewing machine stitches, and again the group three. And this time now I had to cheat on my little note, so I remember it is going to be stitch number 14. And again, these instructions are people who signed up in a club, you'll have these stitch numbers also there. There we go, there's number 14. That sort of look like it could be a design that, that would work really well in there. Well, I will need to move this one and rotate it. So I'm going to assess to rotate it first, 10, de 10 degrees, 20 degrees, and 30 degrees. And it shows up in here on the top, 30 degrees. And I'm going to zoom in again a little bit so I can see that I need to maybe move it a little bit closer in there on... Uh, you can kind of work this one a little bit more precise when you create your real design. I just go quick in here. So now I have one o'clock. So the two o'clock, let's close this window and make a copy. Again, that, that two squares in here makes a copy. It's selected, so I'll just rotate. And then I'm gonna rotate another 30 degrees. 40, 50, and 60. And I would just have to move it so that I'll have it to be my two o'clock. Well, I could keep going this way, but I'm a lazy person, so I'm gonna copy those two and paste them. At least 
copy and paste at the same time. Only one is selected as a default, so I need to click my uh, multiple selection key. That's when I can select those two together. And then I can do a, a copy of those ones. So I could move those ones around. And in order for the rotation, I will need to uh, uh, group them together. And then if I rotate it 90 degrees, and just to kind of adjust a little bit position. So I got uh, two more in there. I might as well then uh, do a copy of this, but, but now again, my copy is not available. So I have to ungroup it, then I can copy, and then I can group again and rotate it another 90 degrees. So we just had to kind of, um, some tools are available grouped, some tools are not available grouped. So now I have I got two more. So one more time, I will again have to ungroup it, to copy, group it, rotate it. And then we can, oops, I didn't rotate it enough. One more time, there we go. And now we have those ones pretty well lined up. Again, you can work a little bit more precise than I do in here. So, um, so this time I don't need this ring anymore. So I will go in here and just either click that one or I could use my, uh, my selection keys either way. And let me close this window so I can get the buttons in the bottom. The circle is now selected, so I will hit delete. And yes, I want to delete that. I don't need it anymore. Well, now everything is in pieces. So if I accidentally move one, they get misaligned. So let's group everything together. So I'm going to go back to the multiple selection key. Select everything this time. This one gets all the pieces selected. Then I close it. And then I will touch this group key. And now it is grouped as one item in here. So that's our clock face uh, done. So this is the time to save this in the machine's memory because uh, we're going to be working on the other parts later in, and then we add this one later. So I'm going to touch the memory. Or your machine may have a symbol of the uh, part, uh, little, uh, pocket and the arrow going in the way. I will just save this one in the machine's memory. So that's it, safe now. So this time now I want to go and start working on the, uh, those, create. I call them creative lettering. So. I'm gonna, easy way for me to get out of this all is, I just touch the house key, and yes, I can cancel this one because I already saved it. And I'm starting from scratch in here and go back into the embroidery side. So to start the lettering, we have beautiful fonts in the machine. And we also have really pretty individual large letters, which are the ones that I used on that original one. But I wanted to put a notch more in here. We have these kind of cool leather shapes. I like the shapes, but I don't like to have those kind of stripy letters all filled in stitches. It takes long time to sew and it's not my favorite look, but I like these shapes. So I'm gonna scroll in here and find the letter S. See how pretty that is. And I will set that one. It's huge, don't worry about it yet. We'll fix that later. I'm gonna just, just rotate it. So I'll go in here and rotate it 90 degrees and I will scoot it down. See, I'm using the arrow keys in here so I keep them perfectly parallel. If I accidentally move it, I can still use my uh, multiple selection key later on to uh, align them, but I'm just moving it in here kind of towards the bottom of the hook. Then I will touch add. I go back onto these pretty letters and the group for those uh, same fonts letter E and set. Edit, rotate 90 degrees and as I notice that I may have to skew him down a little bit more. There we go. I want to have a little gap between them. Now we, I, we can still fix that later. Need one more letter. Add. Back into the pretty font, so pretty letters. The second font and find the uh, W, went a little bit too far up in there. Oh, there we go. Oh, not the small letters, went way up in there. There's uh, all kinds of, these are so pretty. There is W there. Set, edit, rotate it 90 degrees, and skewed it up. 
and this one is really really big so I may have to reduce the size a bit so that they will fit especially if you have the nine and a half by 14 hook well that's all right we can go and close the edit window there that's a size pattern as a default it will just let me go down 10 percent so let's see if that will give us enough in here so I do that one let's do the next one as long as I have a little gap between that's all I care at the time and I'll skew it down a bit. So I'll fix the size later. Because I'm not so these letters. I'm just using the shape of these ones. So I kind of like the way they are located at the moment. So just move that a bit further up and a little bit bigger gap. So now that I have all these letters, I need to select them all so that I can trace around those. So I'll go, again go to multiple selection key, select all and OK. So there's a red box around, they're all selected. This time I'm gonna, just, when I say trace around them, actually I have my machine to do that one. So that little flower in there allows me to go kind of around. See how it picked up all the way around in there, that little black line. I could change the distance in here further, but I don't want this time. I said, that's all I want. And I'm gonna touch memory. And it's telling me that I will find this shape on, um, if it's baby lock, it says IQ designer. If it's brother, it says my design center. And it is under the pattern stamp list. So it's like, okay, I got it. That's where it is being put. So I will close this one and I don't need these letters anymore. So house we go and delete that one. All I wanted was the shape. So it told me that it's safe, their shapes are safely in here on IQ Designer. And it told me that it's on this stamp pattern list in there. And then here it is. Here's the same flower that I had to create it. And here is my SEW. So I will just to open it up and that's my shape. So I didn't have to tra manually trace them because all I wanted to shape. It's a little bit too big. This is artwork. We can play a lot of this size in here. So I'll touch the size key and I will just to skew it down in here, whatever size you want. You can make them skewed more or less small, whatever way you want. Um, I'm gonna just quickly do in here, maybe do a little bit more. So whatever size you want to have, depending on your hope. Just think that we need to have space for the clock still to go here and then time too. So if I just kind of remind what we have in there, see, I kind of put it on the bottom in here and then the things around. So depending on your frame also where you put it. And if you, depending on the size in here, I want to make sure that that will still fit. And it will show the size on that one. So I'm going to just touch OK in there. And I could leave it right where it is so I can move it later. But if I already know, I'll be putting on that spot. This is artwork. So we need to tell now what so now I wanted to select the stitch style in here. So when I go on the uh, on the, the properties for the line, I want to do the uh, candle wicking stitch and St. Patrick's Day green, we'll do green. I even have some green threads in here, kind of feeling green today. That's okay. If I now touch the screen, I'll be drawing with the uh, prehand pen on the screen. See this way, I don't want to do that. Luckily we have undo here. All I, I need to put this in a pocket. And we have two pockets. We want to make sure we use the one beside the pencil because we're working with the lines. So that is now highlighted. And then I will click this one. So they, they kind of change the green color. It may, not, may be hard to see in the video, but they do change the green color. If I'm not sure if I touch again, my machine goes beep, 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 like I'm done it. I don't need two coats of paint. Well, that kind of looks pretty cool already. But then I thought, well, these letters will need some extra. And we have all these pretty fills in here. So that is what I wanted to add. So we have the line properties. We have region properties. So we're going to go to the region properties. I don't want to have a solid fill because that will take a lot of threads and stitches and will be very dense. I don't want uh, stippling either. I want some pretties. So when I click here, another box opens. So I need to touch select. And now I have, depending on a machine, you may have 10 fills, maybe 15 fills, maybe 30 fills, maybe 36 fills. This machine has 30 fills. If you have the upgrade in it, they'll have six more. And I picked up just to kind of this little um, 
not really fancy, but uh, something that was kind of a dense. I like kind of like the uh, basket weave. You could pick any design you want. I leave the red color. That's okay. So now my paintbrush is selected. So if I just touch the screen, now I'll be painting with that. Well, I don't want that. So undo is my friend. I need to put it in a pocket. But now, now we're going to use the fill bucket, not the line bucket. And then I will just touch inside. And here it is. That fill is applied there, just like that. Then I will touch next. And let's see how it would look like. If you have the uh, Dream Machine or Destiny or Stelle or Alte or uh, Meridian or the Multinil, on those ones you'd have to touch the preview to see also. One more step. Solaris and Lumine brings it right away. So now I can see that how it would look like. So if I need to change the size on the fill, which I may want to do in here because they're kind of small areas. So instead of using 100%, maybe I'll put, uh, put it down. Let's do 75 and see how it looks like. But oops, I only selected one. No worries. I could do each one of these separately. But if I touch this little kind of a little chain link here, it selects all of the ones with the same fill. And now when I do this one, I kind of have to just to touch this button again. So it changes all together. So I could have each letter have its own density on there. Or if I want to do all of them, I can do them one at a time or all together. I could change the angle in here. I could, uh, uh, I could even on the Luminae and Solaris, I could even do distortion and moving things. Uh, this one in here uh, is, um, it says off. This is an outline and I want to have it off. So Larissa Luminaire comes it already off as a default. All other machines, it says on as a default. So what you would need to do is then turn it off. It's the, it's the outline in here. Because what it does in here, it would show straight stitch outline and then you'll have the candle beginning in top. We don't need to do that, just extra stitching. So. Uh, again, if I want to have these ones to be a little bit closer together, I could even uh, make this a bit smaller. So up to you. Then let's see about the candle begin. So if I keep using those arrow keys, minute I start seeing the candle begin sign in there, I'm going to do the chain link, select all the candle begin. And if I wanted to change the size in here, I can change the size of the candle begin. I can also change the spacing. I left these ones as a default. They are about four millimeter diameter, but again, if you need to adjust, you can. I'm good to go. And actually, you may want to save this in your machine's memory in case you need to go and edit it. So let me save it there. We can always delete those ones later. But now I'm going to go to set. And this is my last warning that I can still edit my artwork, change my settings or anything I need. If I'm happy with it, I touch OK. And now it stitches. So now I have an embroidery design that I can move around and do whatever I want to. So all I need to do now is to add the text time to so and we also um, sounds like we might have some time to do that now so need to have the clock ready for it. I'm uh, I'm going in here so sorry I went too fast in here but I did I start add and then I'm going to call the fonts not these large letters but actual fonts. And there are lots of pretty letters. I kind of like this one. I use this a lot. And I will just do T in the capital letters. I, M, E. And we do have space. And then T, O. That is a test I can spell. Hopefully so. I That's OK. And then edit allows me to rotate it. If I wanted to do different kinds of uh, things in here, I could also make them arch or whichever way. And, like I played mine a little bit. I made them want to kind of go in a little arch in here and I put the clock in a different place. So this is kind of where you can design how you want to have. So if I need now want to change the arch on this one, when I have my edit window open, the letter T allows me to use these array tools in here and I can have it in a frown or smile or whichever way I want to have them to go uh, or the straight line. So I live in here as a straight line, but you can obviously work how you want to have that one and still can change the uh, size of it and uh, uh, things if needed. All I need is now the clock. Add and we save that one in the machine's memory.
So we gonna go to the pocket and use I have another one because I did a practice practice run in there. So here is my my clock face and it was grouped together as one unit and I kind of had mine sort of going a uh, little bit kind of over the letters and this is when you may want to kind of move your letters around so let me show this again I just uh, rearrange things a little bit in here on the location and depending again size of your fr uh, frame you use you can arrange this differently and then this is the time that you could also maybe save it in the machine's memory so that way it's ready there whenever you want to embroider otherwise we'll just go embroidery and it will be ready to go for and after when it's all done um i, I took it out and it's a stapled around and uh, I, I actually left the stabilizer here i was using a bit heavier stabilizer on this one i uh, left it in there and stapled it uh, if you um, uh, want to put even a layer of batting, a little thin batting would be kind of fluffing in there. Or oh, this is really cool stuff. I really like it. I've kind of found on this stuff, this baby lock ultra soft fusible. So uh, it's a fusible, really, really thin batting, but it makes nice kind of a foundation. And uh, that way you can just leave it in there and I embroider through it and leave it there. And it will uh, give a bit foundation there. Finally, I just used then this little handy tool, punch the hole in the middle of it. And, and then you can put your clockwork here. So that was like, mine is, a, it's, it is a real working clock. I just got bigger handles on mine because the one that came with it. So this one, you can see, this was kind of a uh, Alan's revision because I didn't have an, uh, those, uh, the artist frame at home and I had created this. So he cut me a piece. And then we just mounted the clock mechanism on that one. So uh, here we have it. So time to sew. Any questions you might have, you know where to reach us. Bye.